the Bible says that this mother, this mother decided, I'm not going to let my sons, I'm not going to let the birds, I'm not going to let the bees destroy my sons. I'm not going to let, and I, I, want, I want to talk, because I want young people to understand that your parents are very significant in your life. You may think that you are grown and on your own and can do your own thing, but you are going to need your parents. Come on, talk back to me. Now, you might not agree with me. That's fine with me. But your parents are significant in your life, especially those who uh, try to take care of you. The Bible says that this woman was unique to me. She was unique in many ways. This woman had to have some familiarity with God and the scriptures. Because when things like this happen, you need to know the Lord. You need to, especially when your children, you know, are taken as vengeance. They use these children, they destroy these children for vengeance in the name of the Lord. I want to remind you that. And so the Bible says that this powerful woman of God made up in her mind I'm going to make sure that I watch over my children, even in their death. So the Bible says she uh, spread a uh, sackcloth on rocks and decided, I'm going to stay here until Jehovah God moves the divine punishment that has been established. The Bible said that she made herself a bed. It wasn't an easy bed, I imagine. She, she stayed there day and night, day and night, making sure that the beasts, the birds, did not pluck the eyes out of the sons, made sure that those bodies were not, of course they were going to uh, eventually decompose. But the Bible says that she stayed there and watched her sons, watched over her sons, to make sure that her sons, her sons, would not be destroyed by beasts and animals. Isn't it amazing how a mother takes care of her children? And sometimes children don't understand what mothers have to go through sometimes just to get them where they need to be. Oh, they don't understand. Sometimes they bask in luxury. They don't understand the dynamics, especially... Uh, those mothers who try to teach them the right direction. In this instance, there wasn't much that she could really do because the king gave the order. It's amazing. There was nothing she could do about the law and about the changes, about the system. So she said, there's nothing I can do, but what I can do, I can intercede in some way. I can't fight the law, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on my knees. I'm going to talk to Jehovah. I'm going to talk to the Lord about my sons. God, help me deal with this because my sons were not guilty of the crime. Help me to understand the dynamics of what's going on because my sons were not guilty of the crime. That's why you got to watch who you hang out with, young people. You got to watch who you pal up with. We've heard that all week long in convocation. You got to watch who you walk with and then, you know, okay, I'm going to leave that alone, but you better watch because everybody you walk with doesn't have your best interests in hand. And so she could do certain things, but she did what she could. There are times when you have to do what you can to make sure that your children make it, to make sure. And so let's look quickly. Let's look quickly and I'm going to let you go. This was a powerful woman to me because oftentimes People, you know, use, you know, you know, look at you and, you know, especially she was a concubine, and look at you and sort of try to determine who you are by, you know, your lifestyle, what you do. And when God is working with you and cleaning you up and getting you where you need to be, you know, sometimes still they don't forget where you came from. Sometimes they still don't forget. But it appears that she was there all by herself. I didn't see the church there. I didn't read in the scripture, rather. It doesn't even say how long she stayed there watching over her sons. But she said, God, if you help me, I'm going to stay here until rain falls, because this was the beginning of harvest. I'm going to stay here until you give me an answer. You've got to stay there, mothers, until God gives you an answer. You've got to stay there with your children until God changes. You've got to stay there. I don't care where they are. I don't care what they're doing. You've got to stay there with your children. This woman had this special desire and aim. 
and that was to make sure that her children was covered, one. Two, she had extraordinary devotion. She had this unquenchable attachment. And so, you know, when you're attached to your children, you're attached to your children, amen? And we know that every mother isn't. We know that for various reasons. And I'm not here to criticize them because I don't know their story. But she had this unquenchable, unquenchable attachment to her children. No matter what someone else does to my children, I've got to keep the right perspective. I've got to keep, you know, the right, uh, you know, outlook on life. I've got to make sure. And then to her humble submission and recognition to what was unavoidable. You, she knew. She knew when they came for her sons, this was unavoidable. And so it doesn't seem that there was any bitterness. It doesn't seem that there was any fighting. And of course, you know, I can't say that I would do the same thing. I cannot say that I would do the same thing if someone came for my son or came for my daughter, for that matter, and said, we're going to kill her because somebody else needs vengeance. But the Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and when I come, I will pay. This is what the scripture says. But she was humble and submissive, didn't go fighting with people, but she knew. She was self-sacrificing, self-sacrificing. She sacrificed herself. Children, mothers make a lot of sacrifices that you know not of. Amen? Come on, I know I won't get any amens much. A lot of sacrifices that you know not of. So when you get the big heads, excuse me, when you get beside yourself, amen, you really don't know the sacrifices. Watch out because there are consequences to disobedience. Consequences. And then her patience of enduring of this, it was suffering. It was a suffering thing to watch her children hang on a tree and stay right there. God, you got to help me through this. You got to help me get through this. They didn't do anything, but God, help me get through this. Her patience, watching them and dealing with her own suffering. Long days, long nights, Dreary. Again, the scripture didn't say that anyone was there to give her encouragement. Songwriter said, take courage, thy soul. Just journey on. There are times when you have to encourage your own self. Amen? Patient. She was enduring. enduring. Her ceaseless vigilance, her zeal and her courage. She had this zeal and this courage. Jehovah, help me. Help me be a covering for my children. Help me protect my, although the dead God, I'm not worried about it. Because actually the scripture says, well history says, that this was like a foreshadow of Golgotha. When you have confidence in the Lord, when you trust the Lord, there are things I'm telling you, mommies, you don't have to worry about. You've got to trust the Lord for your children. You've got to trust the Lord to guide them. You've got to trust the Lord to protect them no matter where they are. And as a matter of fact, some of our children are living, but they're the walking dead because they're living in sin and they're going to die in their sins if they're not careful. Her unwearied faithfulness and a hopeful perspective helped her a lot through this journey. It's amazing how, you know, our emotions, because we're caregivers, and we, you know, we, we love our children and want to make sure that they're okay, and we're caregivers. So her unweariness at staying there, watching her sons. And as a matter of fact, I believe that she prayed, and she talked to the Lord. Lord, help me hold my peace. Help me maintain my integrity in the midst of this. Help me, these are my sons. I don't have any more. As a matter of fact, it, the history says that even her husband was killed as well. And so now she's all by herself. All by herself. Now that her sons are dead. But I heard the Lord saying that um, to me in my spirit about this woman. That 
He came to bring her comfort himself. There are times in the midst of being a mother that you've got to get somewhere by yourself and talk to the Lord and let him minister to your spirit. There are times when you've got to get in that special place. Although she was watching, there had to be some confidence that she had because the meaning of her name is Hearthstone. These kind of things can make you tough if you're not careful. That can make you tough. That can make you tough. So the Bible says that she stayed there. She stayed there and talked to the Lord and said, God, I cannot move until the harvest is ended. God, I'm going to stay here until you show me, until you send me the rain. I'm going to stay here and observe my sons. I'm going to stay here and make sure that one, I'll be a covering for my children. I'm going to stay right here on my knees in sackcloth and ashes until you send the rain. Yes, I'm going to stay right here because I know my responsibilities as a mother. My responsibilities is to be a caregiver. We're a caregiver and we're to take good care of our children. I share this with you sometimes. I knew that I had to take care of my children. As a single parent for a long time, I knew I had to do what I had to do to take care of my children. Lord, have mercy. I remember, if you don't mind quickly, I remember there were times when I had to go to social services to make sure I had food for my children. Thanks be unto God, I did what I could to take care of my children. And so I prayed to the Lord. I kept saying to God, I'm going to wait for you to move me from this place to the next place so that I can continue to take care of the children. And so as God began to move in my life, I said, now God, when you bless me to get to the right age, I want to get a job and get off of welfare. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but get a job so that you can take care of your children. Because social services is to help you, not for you to stay there. Now listen, I'm not criticizing you because it was a great need for me in my life. And it helped me during that time. But there came a time in my life that I had to get real with myself. And I said, God, I need a job because I want to make money and really take care of my children. I couldn't afford to send them to college. I really couldn't because I didn't have very much. I gave them what I could. But thanks be unto God. He blessed me and he blessed them. And although I made many mistakes, God said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. I'll see you through. Just be the mother that you need to be to your children. You can't make them do everything right, but you do right. You can't make them walk right. You walk right. You can't make them love the Lord. You love the Lord. You absolutely can't do anything greater than what God can do. And what God can't do, you can't do. So we look to God to do what he always does. And that save our children, isn't that right? And therefore, God bless this woman. And so listen to this very carefully. The Bible said that this woman stayed there with her sons. So much so that she became impressive in the community. So the Bible said the word got to David. The word got to the king because of her faithfulness. And so therefore the Bible says that David responded to her actions. So if you stay there, God will send somebody that's watching your situation to come by and help you out. There were people that blessed me in my life. There were people that gave me money in my hand when I was going through. 
And so the Bible said that David went to the woman. Lord, have mercy. David said, if you will let me infer, I heard of your reputation. I heard of the fact that you stayed here day and night with your sons. That's a woman of faith. That's a woman who will not give up. That's a woman who will not give up on her children. That's a woman who became a covering. She refused to let her children be exposed before Jehovah in the sense of their nakedness. God, let me be the covering for my children's sins. Let me be the covering for their wrong. Let me be the covering for their bodies. Let me be the covering because I respect you, Jehovah. Bless my children in spite. Bless them no matter what. Praise be unto God. The Bible said, David, oh, y'all are looking at me. David said, I tell you what, because of the promise to Saul, to Jonathan, what we're going to do, we're going to take your sons off the tree. We're going to take your sons and take Saul's sons. We're going to take them and give them a decent burial. That's what we're going to do. Isn't it amazing? The portrait of this woman uh, made the history of scriptures. But not only that, it was influential around the community because you know how people talk. What is she doing up there watching the dead? Why is she up there? These are her sons. People love their sons, their daughters, their children. This woman was a powerful woman to me. She didn't have some of the reputations that some of those nice women in the scripture had. But she made history. And so she became a covering for her children. She became a caregiver. And certainly we are grateful for Rispa. We are certainly grateful for Rispa. How do we take care of our children? By praying for them. Being the best example we can be for our children. You can't curse them out. You can't call them bad names. You can't tell them they're bad. You can't even tell them like their father. They're like their father. They're their own individual or their mother. They're their own individual. And so mothers today, read this sometimes. Take care of your children. Not everybody else. You take care of your children. Okay. I know that there are situations when grandparents and family members have to step in, so I'm not in your business. But, you, you know, take care of your children. If you don't have much in time, God knows how to bless you with what you need. Take care of them with what you have. And don't get married grandmommy and granddaddy because they're not taking care of them for you. Take care of your children. That's mommy and daddy. Amen? So this was a portrait of this woman. I just wanted to paint a little picture for her because it is not often that people paint a picture for Rispa.